receive our praise, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for gathering in this early morning to hear from you. We ask in Jesus that your Jesus' name that your heavens will open, release your word like rain. Let it descend like the dew. Cleanse us. Let the word operate like a hammer. Beat us back to shape. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word burn like fire. Burn in our hearts. Cause us to realign. Cause us to, to lose everything that is not of you. Burn off the chaff. Thank you, precious Father. Receive thanks. Receive praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise as you take your seat. Praise God. We are barely seven days to our convention. Hallelujah. Come this time convention commence. Start Morning of Monday, evening of Monday, Tuesday morning, 8.30, Tuesday evening, um, 5 o'clock, Wednesday, 8.30, Wednesday night, 5 o'clock, Thursday morning, 8.30, Thursday, 5 o'clock, Friday morning, Friday evening. So it's going to be intense. I am counseling everyone to take a, take a leave, take a break, and camp with God. Camp with God for those five days. Let's trust God for maximum impact. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to talk about the power of the cross. The power of the cross. The power of the cross. Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. There are some who suggest, who make it sound as Preaching of the cross is outdated. They say the power is, they, they say there's not there's no power in the cross, that the power is with Jesus and the rest of the cross. But Paul is saying here that the preaching of the cross, which means that the cross, the cross should be preached. The cross should be preached, and the cross is being preached. Was preached back. So the cross is the reason why we have Christianity at all. Without the cross, there will be no Christianity. All of Jesus coming, everything he did would be useless if he didn't get to the cross. The cross was Jesus' destiny. He came to die on that tree. So throughout his stay on earth, he kept reminding his disciples, the son of man will be betrayed. And will be handed over to the Gentiles, and they will beat him, and they will crucify him. And on the third day, he will rise again. So that cross, it looks to me that the tree that made that cross, Jesus watched over that tree, especially from eternity. God watched over that tree to make sure that tree would be not that. Hallelujah! At the cross, many things ended. Many things started. The cross was the end of a certain part of history, and new history started at the cross. The history of satanic dominance ended. The history of satanic power over man, possessing man at will, and, 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 and the reign of death and terror ended at the cross. Hallelujah. And a new reign started. That is dominion to the believer that he lost at the Garden of Eden. Dominion was restored at the cross. The cross is the point of history intersection. Where God intercepted the world and began something new. The history of mankind took a different turn at the cross. The history of mankind 
took a different turn at the cross. The cross was the point where divinity, humanity, met with each other to, to, to create an eternal pact. Divinity, humanity, met each other at the cross. The cross is the place where the ultimate price for the redemption of man was paid once and for all. Hallelujah. Is where the price for man's redemption was paid for all. Each high priest in the Old Testament had to come with a lamb, a lamb that whose blood would give them access to the presence of God. But Jesus Christ was both the high priest and the lamb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus was both the high priest and the lamb, the final lamb. He didn't need any lamb, his body was the was the object of sacrifice. Glory to God. As the high priest of our faith, it was time for him to sacrifice something. He gave his body to the cross. The cross remains the doorway into the new life of God in Christ Jesus. The cross remains the doorway. Everyone who will come to Jesus must encounter the cross. So what is the significance and the power of the cross? Number one, the cross is a place of reconciliation. The cross is a place of reconciliation where God and man reconcile. The cross is a place of reconciliation where the price of sin was paid and God and man reconcile. The cross is not just two sticks that they just put together. <laughs> They could have crucified Jesus on a straight stick, you know? Straight stick like this. And a cross above his head like this. Some Bibles, like the Jehovah's Witness Bible, uh, show Jesus crucified like that. That's a, that's a false representation of, of the death and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. All right? They could have crucified him on a horizontal stick, just, on, just like that. But no, they had to do it on the vertical of the horizontal. It had to be a cross. Why? One pointing to God and the other pointing to man. And Jesus held the hand of man on one side, the hand of humanity, and held the hand of God on the other side, reconciling both of them in himself. So we can't, we can't get to God except through the name of Jesus. And God can't get to us without Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus paid the ultimate price. He held man, held God, reconciling them in him, the price that was paid. Reconciled God in himself. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's a power. I hope first service, I hope people hear you hear something. Okay. Praise God. Number two. The cross is the altar of grace and mercy. The cross is the altar of grace and mercy. It's a place where the just paid the price for the unjust. The just died for the unjust. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8. For Christ also has once suffered for sin. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. He was the just paying the price for the unjust. That's the cross. A place of mercy and grace. It's a place where the hopeless found hope. It's a place where the, those without strength found strength. Those that have no, have no might, they got strength there. Romans 9.16 says, So then it is not of him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. The cross is a place of mercy. Where God finally had mercy on man. Where God is not expecting you to pay the price for your sin. The price was satisfactorily paid. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a place where God poured out mercy on man. The cross is a place of grace. A place where grace was released. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. 
by the grace of God, I am what I am. The grace was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So when Jesus gave up the ghost, the veil of the temple tore into two. The tearing of the veil into two marked an end to the Old Testament. It marked an end to an era. It marked an end to a form of godliness. And introduced us to the real godliness. Hallelujah. The veil tearing into two marked an end to man going to a place to seek God. Now God, by the death of Jesus qualifies man's body to be his temple. God no longer needed to stay in a particular building. Man's body became God's temple. So the holy of holies that if you see you die, if you, if you, die, anyhow, you die, it became exposed, meaning it's no longer relevant. It is hereby abandoned. Hallelujah. That is the power of the cross. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, the, the messy seat that was at the ark was no longer relevant, was no longer needed. It seemed like the cross was not the seat of mercy that will lead you to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 6, verse 16, it says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Somebody said the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Number three, the cross is a place of divine exchange. The cross is a place of divine exchange. It was a place where Jesus took our place and we took his place. It was a place of transaction. Because man fell by a transaction he entered into with the devil at the garden of Eden. So Jesus on the cross did another transaction. With the father. So I take the man of. I take the place of man. Let man take my place. So Jesus became sin. He didn't become a sin now. He became sin. He was sin. And man became the righteousness of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So you see that right from the Old Testament. The cross was at work. The book of Genesis chapter 48. When. Uh, Joseph brought his two sons to his father Jacob to bless Manasseh and Ephraim. He put Manasseh on his left side. He put Ephraim on his right side. Manasseh pointing to his father's right hand and Ephraim pointing to the father's left hand. Manasseh is the first son. Ephraim is the second son. So that the father could release the blessing of his right hand upon Manasseh and release the blessing of his left hand upon Ephraim. And the father was blind. Joseph Jacob could not see at the time, but he knew what Joseph would do. And so when the boys came, the Bible said that Joseph, I mean, Jacob guided his hand wittingly and crossed the hand and put his right hand on Ephraim and his left hand on Manasseh. And Joseph got angry and said, no, this is Isaac. Hallelujah. You know what that means? What you didn't qualify for. By reason of the cross to qualify for it. The cross is a qualifier. The cross gives you what you don't deserve. The cross places you in a place of privilege. Somebody shout hallelujah. The crossing of the hand is a type of the cross in the Old Testament. The crossing of the hand of Jacob is a type of the cross in the Old Testament. Somebody shout hallelujah. That kind of change of order is only possible by the cross. Somebody who was first became second. And somebody who was second became first. Just like you are there. You are down, down the ladder. By means of the cross of Jesus, God is about to catapult you to where, where you didn't deserve. Take you to, by reason, see, when, when everybody has gone ahead of you and you have been dusted and left behind, by reason of Jesus Christ and the cross he went on your behalf, you can, you, you can be catapulted to overtake everybody. If you are hearing me, say yes. So the cross, the cross
cross God, by the cross God conferred on you what you did not deserve. By the cross God gave you a new status as joint heir with the son. He gave you a new status. You are now joint heir with the son. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. And if children, then you are heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It should be that we suffer with him that we may also uh, be also be glorified together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Praise God. <laughs> Number four, the cross is a place of forgiveness. The cross is a place of forgiveness. Jesus said on the cross, oh, he didn't say it anywhere else, while hanging on the cross, with nails in his hands and nails on his feet, he opened his mouth and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now it sounds easy. It sounds light that somebody stayed on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. My brother, it's not easy. It wasn't easy with all the pain in his body from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. There was crown of thorns on his head. All manner of things. Then he opened his mouth and uttered. Do you think he felt like asking God to forgive us? No, he didn't feel like it. While we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Imagine the kind of pain he had to endure. But that teaches us a lesson. You don't forgive when you feel like it. You forgive because you must forgive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't forgive because you, you know, you are happy to forgive. Or you really feel like forgiving. No, you don't forgive like that. You forgive because you must. You forgive because it's required of you. Jesus offered forgiveness in the, in the height of pain. In the height of pain. He prayed for our forgiveness. I think he gave us an example there. You too can forgive somebody. No matter how painful the betrayer, you can forgive somebody. No matter how painful the heartbreak, you can forgive somebody. You see, that's why, that's why, you know, Jesus said, forgive us our debt as we forgive those who sin against us. Meaning, because me, I have offered, I have forgiven, I have forgiven like that. You have to forgive. You have to, you have to forgive. Forgiveness is not a pleasurable thing. You don't wait to be able before you forgive. You forgive when you are not able. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? You forgive by faith. When Jesus said, you forgive 70 times, 70 times 7, the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Because they need to take faith. It will take faith to forgive. Praise God. You forgive by faith. You forgive. You release people. You release them even when you are in the depth of sadness. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Praise God. Number five. Number five. At the cross, evil writings against us were nailed to the cross. Evil writings, things written against us, were nailed to the cross. There are evil writings against us. Both by the law, the writings of the law. If you look at the law in Deuteronomy 28, um, the first part of the law from verse 1 to verse 14, it's talking about the blessing. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed in your going out. Blessed in your coming in. Blessed in this. Blessed in that. 14 verses, blessing, blessing, blessing. From 15. But if you neglect to hear this, it's cost. You are cost. You, you see, the cost is looking. They were even more than the blessing. And Jesus said, by virtue of the cross, those writings have been nailed to the cross. Those writings of the law no more have impact on you again. Can somebody give Jesus a can clap? Hallelujah. Those powerful writings in Deuteronomy 28, I think from verse 15, they no longer have effect in your life. Woo, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. There are also people, but, now listen to this, whether you know it,
it or not. Like it or not. There are people in this world that don't like you. They hate you for nothing. Isn't it sad? <laughs> As you are like this, you have not done anybody. You mind your business. Just the way you walk is anointing. Who does it think you are? And they have written things against you and taken the writings of covens of witches. Bow my foot. And they have passed judgment. But what they didn't know was Colossians 2.14. Having blotted out every handwriting of ordinance written against us eh, that was contrary to us, he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That cross carried anything they can throw at you right now. If you are hearing me, say yes. Let them fire what they will fire. Do you know that the Bible said in Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He made a curse for us. So Jesus was not cursed. He became a curse. All the curses you can ever carry, Jesus carried it on his body. And carried both because he became sin too. He became sin that knew no sin. Then he became a curse for us. He carried both the sin and the curse, took them to the cross, and as they were nailing him on the cross, what were they nailing? The sin and the curse. Ooh. Hallelujah. If you have this understanding, no bagger can curse you successfully. I don't care where they came from. Jesus Christ took the curse out of the way, nailed it to the cross. Praise the Lord. Do you know that when they took him from the cross, it was not really him they were taking down from the cross. Because when he gave up the ghost, he descended into hell. The real Jesus, the spirit, descended to hell. His body was buried. Do you know what was buried? Your sin and the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It was not really you, him, that was buried. It's the sin and the curse that were buried. And guess what? When he rose from the grave, they, those things remain in the grave. <laughs> the curse and the sin remained in the grave. They didn't rise up with him. In case you don't know, you know that Israel, when they came out of Egypt, that's a type of salvation. You know that they passed through the Red Sea, that's a type of baptism. They were under the cloud, that was a type of Holy Ghost baptism. You know that when they passed through the Red Sea, the Egyptians entered with them. They came out, but the Egyptians come out. The Egyptians remain inside. So when, you, when, 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 when Jesus came out of the grave, everything he took to the cross remained in the grave. Somebody give God a praise. Give God a praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. Somebody said there's power in the cross. Say it again. Say there's power in the cross. Hallelujah. He became sin. And he became a curse. He became sin. Not that he became a sinner. You must know the difference. He became sin. Any sin you can mention. Jesus became it. That's why on the cross. God turned his back on Jesus. He rejected. Because God is too holy to behold iniquity. He rejected Jesus on the cross. He abandoned Jesus for three hours. From 12 noon to 3 p.m. The earth was dark. The son of righteousness was rejected by his father. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. We should end here. Can you see him? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Maybe we'll just add one more. Add one more. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Jesus became a curse. For it is written, curse is everything. He became a curse for us. Why? Why, are you, why do you think you are cursed? Anybody who said they curse you wasted their saliva because you are uncursable. Did you hear what I said? You cannot be cursed. You cannot be cursed. Jesus, do you know that? Do you know that? The curse God put on the ground. God said to the ground, uh, said to Adam, curse be the ground for your sake. The ground will produce you thorns from today. Do you know that when Jesus went to the cross, he carried those thorns on his head. The thorns on the head of Jesus were the curse that God put on the ground. He carried it on his head to the cross. Meaning the ground from today produces for man. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, you can't be cursed. You are uncursable. Go home and look at yourself in the mirror. And tell yourself you are blessed. You can't be cursed. They said, he said. He said, Christ has redeemed you. There was a cause, but he said he redeemed you. To redeem means he purchased you. He paid your ransom. Did you get you know what I said? He paid your ransom. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He made a curse for us. He became a curse. So now what will happen? Why is it a curse is every man? The hanged upon the tree. Anyone who died such a death is a cursed man. And Jesus died a cursed death. So that what will happen? So that the blessing of Abraham will come upon the tree. What you are supposed to be enjoying is the blessing of Abraham. Did I tell you about the blessing of Abraham? Abraham was blessed in all things. <laughs> Genesis 24 verse 1. He was blessed in all things. So every day, move around, beat your chest and say, I'm blessed in all things. Come on, tell yourself, I'm blessed in all things. I'm blessed in land. I'm blessed in houses. I'm blessed in riches. I'm blessed in... The fruit of my body is blessed. I am blessed in my going out. I'm blessed in my coming in. I'm blessed in everything I touch. I am blessed. I am blessed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, uh, every single wound on Jesus' body was a curse. It's a curse that was inflicted on him. I just told you about the crown of thorns. Every single wound on his body represented a curse, represented a sickness. He carried it. But do you know what? If you don't know it, you can't walk on it. That's why he said, You shall know the truth, and the truth you know. Will do what? Will make you free. So it has been done, but you don't know it. And because you don't know it, you continue to suffer. Who's got what I'm talking about? You got to know it. Know it. Convince yourself. All these things have been done and kept on ground for you to discover it. Once you discover it, it works in your life. Anywhere you turn, when they show you, even if they show you in the dream that you are cursed, wake up and tell that devil, all of you, a zillion of you put together, cannot stop me from being blessed. Because Jesus paid the price for me. He paid every single price. I will marry when it's time for me to marry. I will have children as at when you. I will have children at the combination that I desire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To hell with any bugger who said the cost. That cost backfires right now. I say backfires right now. In the name of Jesus. Christ. Has redeemed us. From the cross of the Lord. He made a cross for us. For it is written. Cost is every man. That hangeth upon the tree. And the blessings of Abraham. <laughs> the blessings of. Do you know the blessing of Abraham? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 13 verse 1. That Abraham, put it up, put it up, put it up. Genesis 13, 1, Genesis 13, 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had. And Lot went up with him. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. And after 
was very rich. Is that a blessing of Abraham? He was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. You hear me? Where, where is your poverty coming from? It doesn't belong to the covenant. Poverty is not in the covenant. Because God told him in, chapter, in that chapter 12, he said, I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Glory to God. Hmm. Want to know the blessing of Abraham? Abraham was rich in servants. He was rich in servants. He had employees, which means you will do business. You will employ staff. He was rich in employees. He was loaded with employees. You have been an employee all your life. The time comes for you to be. Glory to God. Want to know the blessing of Abraham? Huh? At, at, at 100, Abraham had a child. If you are not up to 100, relax. Nothing spoiled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At 100, the, the man was so blessed. Then after, after Sarah died, he, he had six more children. Maybe at 120 or something. Glory to God. And in chapter 24, verse 1, the Bible concluded, now God had blessed Abraham in how many things? In all things. In all things. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. I worship you, almighty God. There is no like you. I worship you, O oh, Prince of Peace. Oh, that is all I want to do. I give you praise for. Just now, I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. I worship you, Almighty. Declare the blessing over your life. Now that you know you cannot be cursed, begin to speak the blessing. Tell yourself, I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. I am loaded. I'm filled with the blessing, the mercy, the goodness, the faithfulness of God. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be cursed. I am too blessed to be cursed. I am too blessed to be cursed. I am too blessed to be cursed. Pronounce it, declare it, decree it, say it with your mouth, confess it. The more you say it, the more you see it. The more you say it, the more you see it. Say it over your life. I'm blessed. I am blessed. 
I am blessed in all things. I am blessed in all things. The only thing I can have is what Abraham did, he, he didn't have. But what Abraham had, I must have. I am blessed in all things. I am blessed in land and silver and gold and sheep. I am blessed in children. I'm blessed in my marriage. I'm blessed. Blessed in my business. I am blessed in silver and gold. I am blessed. Decree it, declare it, decree it, declare it. Say it over your life. Speak it very loudly. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I am blessed in all things. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I am blessed in all things. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I am blessed in all things. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, I am blessed in all things. He became a curse, so I will not be cursed. I cannot be cursed twice. I cannot be cursed twice. He became a curse, so I will not be cursed. He became a curse, so I will not be cursed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I receive the manifestation of the blessing. I receive the manifestation of the blessing in every department of my life, in every area of my life. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Give the praise. Receive the glory. Receive the thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. I'd like to pray for someone that wants to make peace with God. Someone that wants to give their heart to Jesus. You'd like to be born again. You need Jesus in your life. You need your sins forgiven. That's why Jesus died. To give you another chance. Wherever you are. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me of my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord today. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I confess today that I'm born again child of God and I will serve you for the rest of my life thank you for saving me in Jesus mighty name